clasp in both hands. hands. Please use both hands. No, don't close your eyes. I am writing graffiti on your body. I am drawing the story of how hard we tried. How hard we tried. Hey, to Nick Chat, it's Nicole on Wednesdays. And this week's topic uh, was submitted by Sid, and it uh, reads something like this. It reads, uh, genderqueer can mean something different to everyone. Do you think of it more as a style, an identity, or a statement, or whatever you interpret genderqueer to be? And how do you think it works? All right. Well, this is uh, tough because I think that genderqueer to me is a little bit of a lot of things. Um... When I first started sort of looking into what genderqueer meant and toying around with the idea of uh, possibly being sort of differently gendered um, or non-binary gendered, um, I heard from several other people that it really wasn't a legitimate identity, um, but more to do with uh, like fashion and style and sort of more of an androgynous look rather than an identity. Um, you know, now being educated on what genderqueer really means to um, people who identify that way, um, I, I was, I'm sad that that was the first introduction, you know, to it that I had uh, because the people that I was asking, you know, have you heard the word genderqueer? What do you think of that? Most of them said, you know, it's really a bogus identity and it's not really, um, it's more of a fashion androgyny thing, not really an identity. And I think that it, you know, there's some merit in saying that some genderqueer people present in an androgynous way, or maybe even a majority. I would it wouldn't even go that far, but I can understand why that would it would seem that way. Um, and although that has that thought has some merit, as you can see, like even on genderqueer chat, you know, for example, we all have varying styles. None of us really look the same, and we all have different levels of, you know, androgyny. Or whatever, um, but I think to lump people into um, a category like that based on just their outer appearance is terrible in any situation or not fair in any situation. And although we all do it because we're human, I think that that genderqueer as an identity is is definitely much more than just fashion. Although that can play into it, and I think I think when people say it's style, maybe they're thinking about it in terms of presentation, which is understandable. Um, but again, I just, I think that, that lumping someone together that, you know, in the, those big categories is, is just not, it's not going to really be effective in trying to figure out what genderqueer means to each individual. Um, as far as genderqueer being an identity, um, that's what it is to me. Um, it makes my life make a whole lot more sense in a lot of ways. I'm able to be, um, much more comfortable interacting with the world at large uh, because I understand who I am on the inside, you know, and I don't need clothes to necessarily feel genderqueer. And I think I talked about this um, on one of my other videos, how sometimes I feel like I need to dress in a more masculine way to seem androgynous. But, you know, this journey has taught me, especially recently, that that's I'm still genderqueer regardless of if I have a skirt on or whatever. Now, what am I most comfortable in? Of course, you know, a little more androgynous is what I'm going to be most comfortable with, but I don't have to go overboard for that. You know, um, naked, I'm still genderqueer. You know, it doesn't matter. I mean, I may be female bodied, um, but I still feel the same way. And it took me a while to get there because I did have some dysphoria issues. But for me, um, being able to live as genderqueer has helped me to get over those body dysphorias that I had. I still have them a little bit. They're going to be there. But for me, you know, knowing that I'm not going to, you know, choose surgery or testosterone, um, being Jennifer has been a great way to, um, be able to embrace all of myself, you know, and I know that on the inside, this is who I am. I know my girlfriend accepts me and my friends accept me. Um, and that's what I need. And that's why genderqueer is so core to my identity and who I am. Um, as far as genderqueer being a statement, I thought about this a lot. Um, I didn't start out as genderqueer being some kind of social statement or anything. Um, it has 
evolved into that, I guess. Not necessarily because um, I was looking for that role to be this person who makes a statement, but um, the longer that I have lived as an queer openly, the more sensitive that I have become to sort of, I don't know, the wrath of the gender binary, I guess. Um, and so the more sensitive I've become to, to that, to, to the situation of, um, being sort of on this scale of gender and not necessarily in, you know, on either binary side, um, it's made me want to educate, raise awareness and be a leader among other genderqueer people. And unfortunately, well, maybe not unfortunately, but it's uncomfortable sometimes to be put in situations where I have to make a bold statement and I have to stand up for what I know is right in my heart for me. And sometimes it makes others uncomfortable, but overall, usually I get a good reaction, you know, um, typically. <laughs> but I, I just, I really did not mean for it to be a statement, but I guess because it's something new and because it's something that a lot of people haven't really thought about a lot, um, it turns into a sort of statement because it's not the social norm. Just like anything that's not the social norm is considered a, a statement. So, <laughs> um, and then the other question that Sid asked is, how do you think that it works? And I, I'm not really sure how to interpret that question, but um, I guess that I can tell my story. I mean, for me, becoming genderqueer has been a process that um, started when I was very young. And um, although I didn't identify as genderqueer until my 20s, uh, I still was always outside the gender binary, always a little bit off in the gender binary. I never really identified with being a cisgender female. Um, when I started to come into my sexuality, when I was a little bit older, 16, 17, 18, I was a little more comfortable in the cisgendered role because that was what was expected of me. So, and that was fine, but I was still just, things weren't really lining up. So for me, I've always had some type of gender dysphoria of some kind. When I was little, you know, people just used to call me a tomboy, which is fine whatever. It's an acceptable, it's kind of funny. It's like an acceptable trans word in a way. I mean, it's not considered trans, but it's like, oh, you're still a cisgender female, but you just, you're a tomboy. I don't know. It's weird. Like different things have different connotations. And I think it's interesting um, that if you're a masculine, you know, female born person or like female assigned person, that if you like anything masculine or don't like Barbies, or whatever, you're considered a tomboy. And it's kind of, acceptable for a while until you get older. So that's kind of how I lived, you know, when I was younger. And, but I didn't, of course, identify as genderqueer. But what I'm saying is I personally think that someone who is genderqueer has always known that they haven't fit completely with their bodies or they don't feel like their assigned gender is all there is to them. And so I guess that's how I think it works. I think it's something that's innate. And I think that you can come into it like I did. I didn't have education on gender. I didn't know what it meant until I was in my 20s. And then I was, you know, identified with that word because it explained everything I was already feeling but didn't know how to explain in those terms. So I think that for most people, they have some kind of idea that they don't completely fit in with their assigned gender in whatever way that means to them. That may be, mean they want to transition. That may mean nothing other than the fact that this is how they identify, like myself, you know? It may need, you know, but being genderqueer has just been so, such a powerful, identifying as genderqueer has become such a powerful and um, really emotionally moving experience for me because I've been able to finally find something that, um, that fits and that works for my life and just totally makes sense out of the world um, in which I interact. So I guess that's all I have um, 
for this week. But uh, I hope that you guys have a great week, and I'm looking forward to everybody's video. Bye-bye.